Good afternoon, everybody. This is a live severe weather briefing on the threat that could impact portions of the Deep South later on this afternoon, especially this evening, just to the south and to the east of a stationary front that is draped from the southeastern Texas Piney Woods across central Louisiana and central and southern Mississippi. There are a couple photographs that do look favorable for a tornado threat. But largely, the flow is oriented parallel to this stationary front. That's uh, part of the main reason why it is stationary. Uh, it's uh, stationary from the East Texas Piney Woods through Central and Southern Mississippi. And I'm looking for those locations where it's most easy for the supercells to move off of that stationary front. And uh, that's why I've indicated a couple of those areas. This area where the front is oriented more southwest to the northeast. And then there is another kink over uh, the Texas Piney Woods to the north of Houston. And those locations are where the stationary front is oriented more southwest to the northeast. And that allows these supercells to move off the front and into the open warm sector with an east-northeasterly really storm motion. However, they certainly will struggle to do so uh, through the afternoon and the evening. This looks like more of a classic heavy rainmaker set up with the upper level flow parallel uh, to that front that is oriented from the southwest to the northeast. But still, I've seen crazier things happen in Dixie Alley, and I'm especially watching this area in southern Mississippi. That's the uh, best combination of instability and low-level wind shear. The background map from Pivotal Weather on this target area shows this forecast 0 to 1 kilometer storm relative helicity at about 5 p.m., and throughout the warm sector, it's pretty uniform from southeastern Texas through southern Mississippi with those 0 to 1 SRH values in the 120 to 160 meters squared per second squared range, which is incredibly marginal uh, for a tornado threat. But still, it is non-zero. That helicity uh, is favorable just enough. Uh, to get an isolated tornado potential, especially there in southern Mississippi where those storms can move off uh, that boundary a little bit more easily and also to the north of the Houston area where I think that there could be uh, some supercells moving off the front. And usually I do like to see setups where an upper level storm system is moving in where there's a solid or where there's a robust vorticity advection with height we call that upper support but similar to yesterday we still have that subtle anticyclonic curvature aloft it's almost zonal flow but it is a little bit curved uh, to the uh, anticyclonic direction and that causes a little bit of subsidence to dominate uh, the atmosphere and that's why supercells aren't going to develop until later on this evening when the low level jet develops and you get a little bit more convergence along that surface front uh, the the main parent storm system is still way out over baja mexico this is the one that's going to bring a severe weather threat to dixie alley on wednesday and the models have backed off uh, of the shape of that system just a little bit the gfs is still showing a robust open wave moving across the southern plains and being a more substantial severe weather threat across the lower mississippi river valley uh, but uh, the, uh, the latest nam is showing quite a limitation in instability and a relative lack of that elevated mix layer probably because this is a cutoff system as it moves across the mexican plateau instead of having those strong westerlies to bring that dry air at mid levels over top of that moisture but overall this looks like a heavy rainmaker setup you've got a subtropical fetch in the southern stream here that's causing uh, this low to close off over northern baja and a dig off to the south even though it doesn't have a lot of flow on the back side a lot of the flow is over the southern and eastern portion of that trough but it still digs off to the south and that's because of that subtropical connection where you're generating a cyclonic curvature on the southern side of that trough overall though this is more of a rainmaker type setup but still you could get a mesoscale accident uh, where those storms are able to to move off of that boundary looking at 850 millibars across uh, the warm sector you have southwesterly flow that's generally 30 knots uh, maybe a couple of barbs there at 35 knots and that is uh, leading to marginal low level wind shear uh, to the south of that boundary but it looks like there is a little bit of an increased pop here over southeastern texas that is uh, near the kink with that surface front uh, to the north of houston uh, that's coincided with that you even have a little bit of a weaker low level jet across the eastern target area of southern Mississippi, uh, at least uh, at this time, which is late afternoon. Uh, as you get closer to evening, this low-level jet here is going to intensify as well. 
Uh, but look at this uh, maximum in the low-level jet back associated with that kink. There's probably a little bit of a pseudo uh, low-level cyclone uh, in that area. It uh, co coincides with that kink. Uh, you have the front that's a little bit more southwest to northeast to the west of the kink. To the east of the kink, you've got almost a pseudo warm front or more of a stationary front. And anywhere near that kink with an east-northeast really storm motion, it is possible for a supercell to move off that boundary and into that robust low-level jet of about 40 knots there across the Texas Piney Woods. I do think that central Louisiana is kind of in between those two target areas with more of a west-to-east oriented front. I think that storms are going to have a particular difficulty moving off that boundary further east. This is the uh, 0 to 1 kilometer energy helicity index, which is a composite index between the 0 to 1 kilometer storm relative helicity that we've already analyzed and the surface base cape throughout the, uh, the deep layer. And this shows you how uniformly sheared the warm sector is from East Texas, where we have that kink, even across central Louisiana, where the front's oriented more west to east, and also in the vicinity of the Jackson area across southern Mississippi where we also have that kink, even though there is a slightly weaker low-level jet, low jet off to the east, there is some more directional shear out there. And I'll show you the forecast photographs that are pretty uniform throughout this target area. But you do, do see a little bit of an enhancement in the EHIs across southeastern Texas there, and also here across southern Mississippi. And it's those areas that I'll be watching most closely for that marginal but non-zero tornado threat. Looking at the forecast photograph, this is on the HRRR at about 5 p.m. This is in the vicinity of the Jackson area. And even though the uh, magnitudes of the low-level winds are pretty marginal, you can see the one-kilometer wind here just shy of 40 knots, pretty veered also southwest to northeast. You've got a storm motion just north of due east uh, at about 37 knots. And that's because of all that strong flow aloft with the subtropical connection of this system, even though it is subtly anticyclonic. Um, and you do have a decent curved J-shaped photograph here uh, enclosed by the storm motion vector. And you do have a critical angle that is 60 degrees. It's not that bad. It's not 90 degrees, but it's also not 45. And so that's leading to some decent area in here. And that's uh, proportional to the 0 to 1 kilometer storm relative helicity, which is going to be on the order of about 150 meters squared per second squared there across southern Mississippi, all the way back to the Texas Piney Woods to the north of Houston. And you've even got a weird cyclonically curved deal at the mid-levels there, which is probably going to be irrelevant uh, to, the, to the whole entire setup. But this is not a bad photograph with that, the storm motion vector for the right mover a little bit north of east. There is a chance that that storm motion will allow for those storms to move off that boundary. But the boundary is already pretty messy even this morning. There's already quite a bit of rain socked in across southern Mississippi, even on the east side of that boundary. And uh, that's not surprising. There's going to be a lot of cloud cover out there, uh, limiting how much instability can happen. You don't need a ton of instability in Dixie Alley. You have even got a little bit of a renegade developing there to the northwest of Laurel. That's probably not going to do anything. This severe weather threat is more for closer to sunset, uh, there's uh, with this anticyclonic curvature aloft, really the only precipitation is happening to the north of that stationary front where you get what's called isentropic lift. Basically the uh, southwesterly moist winds are lifted up and over the cool air at the surface, squeezing out that moisture. And that's why you've got a lot of this rain, largely stratiform, some elevated convection too. And these will continue to percolate throughout the day. And there is a chance that as we get closer to evening, some of these dominant updrafts could turn to the right and we'll have the chance to move off that boundary. But boy, I am not very confident in this setup doing much of anything out there in Dixie Alley, which is good news. The setup on Wednesday still has really strong flow, uh, but the NAM and uh, the models now are shearing that system out a little bit early before it reaches Dixie Alley. And that uh, is leading to a reduction of some of that wind shear. And especially the instability is quite marginal, at least forecast by the NAM. But often what happens in Dixie Alley is these setups will come together at the last second. So I'm going to continue to monitor the forecast models and make the decision tonight on how I'm going to deploy. If I'm going to drive in with my Subaru or if I'm going to fly in there to Jackson and do kind of a solo chase. But... 
So far today, it's going to be a rainy day across northern Mississippi, northern Alabama. Severe weather possibly this evening, uh, but it is quite a marginal event uh, with this southwest to northeast oriented stationary front and the flow largely parallel to it. So I'll be doing more lives starting later on today through tomorrow on the Dixie Alley severe weather threat on Wednesday and also some more radar breakdowns as this severe weather threat materializes later on this evening. I hope you guys have an incredible Monday. Thank you for joining me this morning. Never stop chasing.